Hello, my name is Leon Turner uh, from uh, Trend and I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about IQ4 interfacing, um, something which has been uh, within the Trend portfolio for a little while now um, and this is a very simple little video to um, describe how this is all put together, how it works <clears throat> and how it is engineered and hopefully to demonstrate how simple it can be. So on my screen <clears throat> I have a little diagram diagrammatic representation of what I have in front of me. Now I don't have a Modbus device so I'm going to use IQ Vision to simulate a Modbus slave device somewhere down the line. That will be fairly transparent um, to us. On the same laptop I have uh, set which will be talking to an IQ4. The IQ4 will then be making Modbus requests upon IQ Vision. So that's kind of what it looks like here. I do have a real IQ4. Uh, the other two bits of software are running on the same laptop. So if I show you IQ Vision, this is it. As I said, um, there are two little Modbus devices set up. They're virtual Modbus, Modbus devices with some values. Those values are what we're going to be picking up in the IQ4. And just to help depict that, I've got a little web page which shows the various values that we're going to be picking up from those two devices. It's all intents and purposes. This device, this uh, set um, demonstration will use IQ Vision exactly like any other kind of Modbus device, albeit we're using IP here, but the process is uh, very, very similar for um, RS485 type Modbus connections on the serial port. So to start, here we have set. Um, I've put nothing in it. Uh, it's a completely empty strategy. Um, and this is what I will be sending down to the controller, which is already unlocked for IQ4 interfacing. That can be done retrospectively. And in fact, the controller I have is about eight or nine years old. It's been updated to the latest firmware and then unlocked for um, IQ interfacing. So to start, what I need to do is actually add a network. So most of these integration type jobs now, be it via Woolbus, Mbus or Modbus, and others in the future will be done via an interface network module. Now for my purposes here, I want to add a Modbus IP network. And there it is, and I'll give it a name. So we are talking to IQ Vision in this particular case. And I add my IP address. And also the port number, which is nearly always 502 for Modbus over IP. And that's that. So the network is set up. However many client devices were downstream of that, I could then add these devices individually. There are only two here, so uh, that is all I'm going to be setting up. And to that end, we add a Modbus device. Now this Modbus device is address one, so I'm going to leave it at address one, that's the default. And we're going to call it something relevant. And most importantly, pick the network to which I'm going to be sending these requests. So IQ Vision Modbus in our case here. Now that's the device set up really. All I need to do now is add the various <clears throat> points and registers which I'm going to be collecting from Modbus. So quite confusingly perhaps these are called outputs in our case. So they come from the device into IQ Vision, uh, sorry, into IQ interfacing and then out into IQ4 strategy. So that's where the out comes from. They're from the device out into strategy. I'm only going to add three in this particular instance. Uh, I'm going to label them so I know roughly what we're talking about. So it doesn't get too confusing later on. It doesn't really matter what they're labeled to be totally honest. In fact, I could have made that clearer, couldn't I? Okay, and the addresses. Now, I happen to know what these are because I set them up. This would normally involve a bit of reading of manuals. And I also know it happens to be two bytes unsigned. There we go. Now, you should notice that set is trying to help me here. So if I add a, an address or a register, and set doesn't think I've assigned it in the correct range for the data type, it will actually give me a warning sign and try and help me. And that now is all good. So we've got three addresses, uh, registers we're going to pick up from the one device and the labels for the various outputs. OK. Now, in order to read those, what I'll do is I'll add some 
some internal sensors to write them into. Uh, it doesn't really matter what I label these. Because they're only going to be temporary. Okay, so there's my sensors. As I said, it doesn't matter what I label them. Now, the important bit is connecting those up. So under Other, I have Connectives. And if I go to this end tab here, Show TCL Connectives, I actually have my Modbus 11, 12, and 13 points there. And if I just put them on the screen, I can then send these into the various inputs. Oops, missed. There we go. Now, if I straighten all these up, because even someone as untidy as me doesn't like these crooked lines everywhere. Right, good. Now what I'm going to do is send that down to the controller. So we'll download the whole strategy file to the controller. It shouldn't take too long. So this is for one device. Now, when I get to the point where I have some results back, I'm going to add the second Modbus device. Again, it's from the same uh, network, so the configuration will be fairly simple, but it doesn't have to be. We can put maybe 10 IP networks and Modbus IP networks in, the single, in a single controller. And then we'll go to live values to prove what's, what's happening. And we got some numbers, and they should correlate. So 748 and 154, there you go. That seems to work. Great. So to add another device, I'm going to copy the lot and paste it into the same page. Now, this is probably because I've duplicated a load of things. It's not going to be very happy with me about that. So what I'll do, I'll delete these connections here, which I duplicated. And we will add this. So that what is complained about is the fact that I have two uh, address two. So if, uh, address one, sorry. So if I change that to address one, uh, address two even, my outputs are the same. And I'm going to change the numbering. So it makes more sense when we connect them up. There we go. So we have now basically added another device. What I need to do is use my, go back to my connectives again, and find the ones I've just added, which is 21, 22, and 23, and connect those to the sensors. As I say, the, the, the principle is exactly the same for Modbus IP as it is here for, uh, sorry, for Modbus RS-485 as it is for uh, Modbus IP. I just have to set up a serial interface rather than an IP one. I'll send the whole lot back down. Obviously, I would have done this all in one go if it wasn't for demonstration purposes. It shouldn't take too long to download. It's not a huge strategy. And if we put it into live values, hopefully we can see the output. There we go. So they're, they're different, clearly. And that should, again, match up with my device 2, which it does perfectly. Uh, and that is, in, that is it, in essence, for reading from a device, so uh, a meter or some such. Um, and it is genuinely as simple as that. Now, we do have a lot of other templates which are already in set. So if I add a fresh page and go to the strategy library, which is all pre-configured and pre-installed, under IQ interfacing Modbus uh, metering, for example, we have a lot of pre-configured solutions. If I pick one at random, so Carlo Cavazzi, um, we have an EM23 and 24 meter already in here. And this will be address one again. And the strategy already comes in. So this includes a pre-configured interface module, 
which will have the outputs already configured in it, just one, in this case, the total energy. And you've been given some strategy here as well to divide this up into various 15 minute totals and uh, the, sorry, running 15 minute totals and the cumulative output as well. So that is pre-configured. Um, there are a lot of these meters to choose from and there are more coming all the time. So far, we've been reading from uh, an external device, um, but what if we want to send data out to something like an enable bit to a boiler or uh, some such or a demand or chiller? Well, that is also totally possible. So in the Modbus device here, we've got outputs, we've got inputs. Now inputs are from strategy to the Modbus device. So again, the other way around. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add one. And I happen to know where that actually goes. It is 4002, 40002 perhaps. And it is again two byte unsigned. Now my device is ready to receive this. If you can see on that little PX page, we have a, a value sent from IQ4, which is currently at naught on both devices. I'll hide that away again for a moment. So what I'm going to do is take a parameter from the controller. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the minutes since midnight as it's a number that continues to move. It's just a nice, easy one to use. And in my connective part, again, we've now got an input up here, which I forgot to label, but that doesn't matter too much. And I connect those two up. Now if I send this all back down to the controller again, so all I've done is added one line into the interface module itself, and then a little bit of connection to actually connect some data to that, that one input. And we'll get our, our little value screen up here, so it might come up instantly. So the controller's loading the strategy. And hopefully you'll notice the value came in straight away. And just to double check, we'll put this into live value so you can see that there is no smoke and mirrors and no trickery. That is the exact number that's been sent. So now we have reading and writing to and from a Modbus device. Now I hope that has been uh, helpful and has shown how simple this can be. Um, again, if you have any questions, please talk to your trend representative. Um, it's been good to talk to you again and I hope we can do it again soon. Thank you very much and goodbye.